we will now create our newsletter section which has some form elements, a sign up button and a terms and conditions overlay with text inside and two buttons for closing. Alright, so now we will go out of our container div which we created all the way up here because we want this section to span the full width of the browser window so it shouldn't be constrained by the container. We create a section tag this time without an ID since we don't need to jump to it from our menu at the top. Inside we will however create a div with the class container so we can constrain the content like the rest of the sections. We just want to have the background color go the full width of the browser. Now we'll create a form element inside this an H2 heading with the text sign up for our news letter. In the paragraph with the text receive the latest news and others by by signing up to our newsletter. Now we'll create our first form group, that is our first input field. So we have this div tag with the class form group. Inside we add our label and input. First we have the label, with the for attribute with the value input name and the class is our only and the text your name. We want this to be hidden for normal screens. This is why we use the class is our only so they are still available for screen readers. Then we have our input with the type text the class form control, the placeholder, first name, last name, and the ID, input name, which our label we're referring to here. We'll duplicate this form group and change it for an email input field. So the for attribute will have the value input email, the text, the hidden text will be your email, input type will be email and placeholder will be mail at example.com and the ID input email. Then we'll create a checkbox which is a little different structure. We still have our wrapping element, this time with the class form check and not form group as before. We have our label again, this time with the class form check label. Inside this label we put our input with the type checkbox class form check input the ID input terms and the value terms. The text will be I have read and accept the terms and conditions. Great. And then we create a div element like this and inside we'll first put a small 
texts in relation to the form. So we will use the class form text. It's like a help text for the form. The text will be you can unsubscribe from the mailing list at any time. And after this we'll have our submit button, which is a button tag with the type submit and the classes BGN and BGN dark. The text will be sign up. Great. Now we have our form as we can see in the browser. However, we still need to make our terms and conditions modal. So back in the code editor, we'll go right after our form and add the wrapper for our modal, which is a div tag with the classes modal and fade for an animation. Then the ID modal, the tab index minus one, the row dialog, the area labeled by attribute with the value modal title and the area hidden attribute with the value true. All these attributes are for accessibility reasons, keyboard navigation and stuff like that. Inside this we create another div tag with the class modal dialog and modal LG to make it a large modal. We'll get the role document. Now we will create the actual content. The wrapper will be with the class modal content. So first we'll have our modal header like this and it will be an h5 heading element with the class modal title and the id modal title the text will be terms and conditions we will also create the close button which is a button tag with the type button the class close the data dismiss attribute with the value modal and the area label attribute with the value close. Inside we create the actual icon which is a span element with an area hidden attribute with the value true so it's not visible for screen readers and inside the times HTML entity. So the times symbol. Now we will create our modal body which will live right here. So it's a div with the class modal body. And now I'll just paste, paste in five paragraphs I think it is from the final project over here. So, like this. One, two, three, four, five paragraphs. Okay. And then we'll create our modal footer, a div with the class modal footer. Inside this div, we put another close button button tag with the type button and the classes BGN and BGN secondary and the data dismiss attribute with the value modal and the text close. Now we need to create a link that will open this modal. We'll do that from up here where we have the text I have read and accept the terms and conditions. So we'll create a link out of the last three 
words like this. To open the model, we need to add a data toggle attribute with the value model and a data target attribute with the value hash model, which is referring to our ID for the model down here. Okay, let's see this in action. Now, when we click the terms and conditions, we see the model fading in and we can scroll the model inside our screen and close it.